morning friends it's Renee here welcome hope you're having a great morning so far on this Saturday I am um, gonna do a little bit of sewing and then I have to go mow the lawn my husband hurt himself on the job and he has to have surgery he's fine just tore his he dislocated his shoulder and tore his labrum labrum something like that something that attaches to your shoulder bone and he has to have it reattached so I don't mind. I need the exercise and it's a beautiful day outside. But I had a viewer request that wanted to, me to sew on my domestic Singer machine. It's a Singer 99. Um, I got it off of Facebook Marketplace and I love it. I've sewn a couple of backpacks on it. Let me show you these. This is the back of the machine. I sewed this backpack. It's the Meraki backpack. And I sewed another backpack by another um, pattern designer, but it's in my store in my booth. It was all vinyl, and I used waterproof canvas on both of them, but it was a real struggle on, on that one backpack that was all vinyl because I think because the pattern was hard to read for me. I struggled with reading patterns, and um, it was just difficult on some parts of the bag where the um, vinyl and two layers of vinyl plus lining plus um, interfacing plus the strap was too thick and it was hard to place and he had to go around a curve and so that was a little difficult challenging but I did it and it came out nice just because you struggle doesn't mean you don't put out a good product but anyways on my singer I use um, only singer needles I've tried other needles and it won't it does not like other needles. And I use, let me show you, a Teflon foot. And I got it from, let me pull you around to the front. I got it from featherweight.com, featherweight.com. And so here's the front of her. She's a tiny little thing, pretty. Um, paid $100 for her, came with a table. Also on this singer, to reverse it, you have to push it up yourself. And you have to pull it back down. It doesn't automatically come back down for it to stop the reverse. <laughs> that's hard to get used to when you're sewing on everything else. That's an automatic. You just boop and reverse. So this does not come back down. You have to move it back down. This also controls your, you move it up and down and turn the knob to which stitch length you want. And um, the needle is threaded from left to right instead of front to back. It's left to right. And metal bobbins it takes. And she's a good little machine. Um, I've enjoyed using her. And she saved me a lot of things when my Janome couldn't go through uh, thick handles. She did. So, let's get started. Let me show you what we're working on. Let me bring you back around here. Sorry to shake you up so much. I am going to do a Harlequin pouch. It's the easy sew. And I'm using vinyl and fabric with... Woven Fuse 2 for the interfacing. I love Woven Fuse 2 from um, Barb's Got Interfacing. It is, it is delicious. It is just so luxurious interfacing. And I've already done three of them. Uh, the two of the front and then I'm doing the back and this is the last of the back. So what you do with the pieces is you line them up. You have a blunt end on one piece and you put the blunt end towards the, well, hello, towards the uh, lower part of your piece, of your vinyl piece. And you're going to have a little bit of the edge sticking out. That's okay because when you do your 3 8 seam allowance, it will all equal out and measure up. So let me sew that. I'm having a regular stitch length of um, around 2.5, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And I always try and remind myself to start with the needle down because this machine is fast and uh, the knit the thread will come out if you don't do that and you have to adjust your pressure to your presser foot constantly um, with this machine because it'll start sliding your fabric will start sliding if there's not enough pressure and then also also can uh, your needle will sink down way down and make an indent on your vinyl if it's too much pressure so you have to always kind of find the right adjustment so here we go, needle down, and it's loud, so just warning. Back stitch, put it back down. Back stitch, put it 
back down and it's still once you put it back down and you lift your foot up it still goes forward a little bit so you got to be weary of that with this little machine you know um of all the years i've been sewing you just have to every machine has an adjustment no matter what type or how good the machine is it's all have they all have their little quirks like i got a brand new juki 2010q for my husband for my 60th birthday coming up and i love it it's a semi-industrial but it's got already got quirks and um, I have to adjust to the quirks of the machine, of different machines, like different things. Okay, for my top stitch, I'm going to do about a three. This, because this does not have markings of what's three-eighths, what's one-fourth. This is three-eighths. One-fourth is like the edge of the foot. And then one-eighths is like a little bit into my foot. So I just watch. I put the fabric into the fabric on the middle of this little foot right here my teflon foot needle down see how the thread comes up like that you have to be with that i'm not going to iron it you don't really need to i mean if you feel better you can't iron the vinyl but you can iron the fabric this table shakes so much you can see my lamp shaking over here i might even move it because i'm going to show up on the video here so back stitch needle up There's absolutely no bells and whistles on this machine. And my Juki's got a lot of bells and whistles, and I am loving it. I started the Barona um, bowler bag on my Janome domestic machine, and I could have finished it on my Janome, but um, I wanted to use my new machine because I just got her last week. I've only used her a couple of times because my oldest daughter came into town she's a teacher and she had spring breaks so she came into town to see me she and her husband live in raleigh north carolina or north of raleigh so i top stitched that and see how it equals out the edges equal out with that little square blunt edge and so now once you put the two pieces together then you're going to bring the centers together and what you want to do you want to make sure you match up the bottom parts of your fabric to the other part because that's going to be a V and you want it to, it will show if it's not lined up. So I'm going to do that and put it together. I got these clips from Walmart, they're hair clips. I use a lot of these for my vinyl. But when I really want it to stay, I use these clips fake wonder clips or generic I shouldn't say fake generic wonder clips I use it on I put it where it should line up on each end and then I can use the other clips so let me do that my sewing room is my spare bedroom it used to be my oldest daughter's that was just here and I made it into my sewing room. Now, my youngest daughter and my middle son, I have three children. My son and my youngest daughter are still in college, and she was home for spring break last week. And then my oldest daughter, who's a teacher, was on spring break, came this week, and then my son will be here for Easter. That's his Easter break. And so I'm going to sew down the middle, and you want to make sure this is lined up. I'm going to sew down the middle. Keep getting fuzz. I wonder if I need to clean here. So three eighths of an inch of a seam allowance, and you're gonna see how I may have to adjust over the vinyl because there's a little bit of a hump. And there's also, um, you know, these these Teflon foots are not expensive. You can get it from Featherweight. You can probably get one from Amazon. But um, I like for this machine, I like going to the Featherweight store because they know all about the machine. They have all the parts. Also, I got this off of Amazon, it's a hump jumper, and it has this thickness and then this thickness. And I found with my new machine, Juki, sometimes I need an even thicker thickness. So I made a hump jumper out of vinyl and just made it thick and I stick it behind it. There's different thicknesses I made. You can do that instead of buying a hump jumper. This is a little bit thinner. But 
I found that my juki will eat. If it's too thick right here, it will eat the vinyl. So I'm trying to find a way where it won't do that. And when I did that, use those the second time around, because I tore up two straps, that it worked. But I also found out that when you get your juki machine, you're trying so bad, you need to buy a, a different plate that has a bigger hole for it. And it's a single stitch. It doesn't do any fancy stitches, and so is this. This is no fancy. I have attachments to it, but I haven't figured out how to use it because I mainly use it to sew bags. Okay, enough talk. Needle down. Back stitch. Oh, what is that noise? Oh, that's my. Those are my clips making a noise. Now, here I come up here. Needle down. Take my clip out and let's see if we'll leave over there. Oh, yeah. Guys, all over. I'm telling you, this machine can cut through thick fabric and or sew through thick fabric. And some people say you shouldn't use it often on that, but I've also heard others say it's perfect for it. Oh, look at that. <gasps> Turned out perfect. They match up perfectly. So now I'm going to do a top stitch. Now they want you to fold out this and then top stitch on each side in the front. And I'm going to iron this from the back to give me a little bit of help there for it to stay down. And my <laughs> ironing board is a TV tray with uh, uh, quilting batting cotton quilting batting and then I just put a piece of cotton fabric over it. It's been washed. It looks filthy but it's been washed really. My, my iron is a steam iron uh, ever steam from Black & Decker. Love it. Puts out lots and lots of steam. Now when I, when I iron over the vinyl, I'm going to iron over a little bit but actually I'm not going to do that. But I can. I'm going to get my Teflon I have a silhouette machine, cutter machine, and I also have a uh, heat press, and it's, I got a uh, vinyl, I mean a Teflon sheet with it, so I use it to iron over my vinyl when I need to sometimes. Now, I don't leave it on there because it'll, you know, it'll burn, but just to give me a little bit of help here, I put the Teflon over it. These are cheap. Let me get them in there. Amazon. So it can even stick to this sometimes. So that helped. Let me show you that. So now let's top stitch. So bring it back over here. Don't want me to keep um, moving all around. Now, I want to decide, do I want to do a white top stitch? Because that will really show up on your red. I don't want to do a red and switch. Do white up here and red down here. I think I'm just going to go with the white. Nerve wracking when, you're, when your top stitch is really going to show. So I'm going to make a bigger stitch. When I change my stitch length on here, I test it because this is persnickety and sometimes it doesn't like a certain so I just adjusted it. Let me see if that's something I like. This is croc vinyl from My Punk Bordery, which is where I get most of my vinyl. I don't think I bought vinyl. Well, I did buy vinyl somewhere else one time. But I love her vinyl. I love her customer service. I love... Um, she's like Chick-fil-A, the fast foods. They get her done. They get it to you. Great customer service. Super nice people. Okay, that's not bad. Let me do a little bit different because I like this stitch, but I don't like that stitch. Um, but see how it sews through this? And it's definitely a Teflon foot is what you want to go through vinyl. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, the back looks good too. Um, those are the things I do to make sure I it sews well. So I'm going to do a one eighth of an inch. Do I want to start there? Yeah. Let's start here. One eighth of an inch seam allowance for top stitching. 
trying to see what side of foot I want to start on. I'll start here. Needle down. Back stitch. Okay, so now it's getting heavy, so I'm going to lighten the presser foot. Pressure. Presser. Pressure on the pressure. <laughs> presser foot. Say that five times. stuck a little bit. That stitch. Let's see how we did. Oh, not bad. Not bad. So that's one side. Now we gotta do the other side. Pull your threads back. And let's line it up. I'm gonna start on the vinyl side this time. I do have a walking foot I use with this machine sometimes. Um, I need to buy one that fits this one. I bought a generic one off of Amazon and supposedly it's supposed to fit this, but I'm gonna adjust it a little bit more on this. Okay, I don't like that. Too far off. So, I know it's going to show a dent on the vinyl, but when you um, put the bags together, it won't show that much. So, let me get my finger up on my mic. See if I can get this pulled out. I may have to let it go. Seam rippers are your best friend, whether you like it or not. Even the, quote, so-called experts use seam rippers. Um, sewing machines can be like your children. Sometimes they behave and sometimes they don't. Okay. I'm not getting that out. Let's start up top and go down. Now, I'm not the resident expert, as you can see on this. This is just things I do to make it work um, on this machine. Needle down. Back stitch. see if I can get this pulled out. That way it won't be so noticeable. You have to be very careful with vinyl. I mean, once the hole's in there, the hole's in there, but when I put it together, if there's a little bit that shows, it won't be that noticeable. There's no perfect bag. Just remember that. I hope this encourages you with my mistakes to give it a shot. This is really a simple pattern. It's just lining up. I didn't have this lined as close to the line, center line as I like. And I didn't want to keep going. Starting up mostly up. Also a trick. If you call it a trick, I also have an embroidery machine and I um, I did embroidery for a living at a company that embroidered shirts for schools. And I learned lots of tricks there and tips. Um, but they had these fabric markers, which you probably know about. And I can use my fabric mark on that white thread that's showing and I have a red one and you won't notice the white. I'm almost getting it. Okay. I need that little 
little bit will be okay. Okay, clip my top threads. I am not an expert in top stitching for sure. Now we're gonna put these two together. The lower parts go together. And this one needs trimming right here. Just line them up. Remember, again, make sure your center, this is your center, the lower part of the V on the pouch. You need to match up the bottom parts right there. And clip them. And do the same on the other side. Match up the top parts. And clip it. And then you can put some other clips. If you want. Okay, we're doing three eighths of the seam into the seam allowance again. Needle down, back stitch, put your lever down. And my press, my foot press for the um, for this machine is metal, and you put your foot on the side, not forward. Um, so you have to adjust to that too. And see how it's getting stuck there. I need to release some pressure and walk it through to get over it. And then it just sews through. See how sometimes you just have to adjust to your machine and what it needs to sew. Needle up. So I'm going to open it up. And these didn't match up as well as the other one. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, they did. So now I'm going to press this open and top stitch. So I'm going to use my Teflon cover when I'm sewing. I mean, ironing on vinyl. But you open up the seam and then top stitch. This was a, and it's, I think it still is, this was a uh, free pattern by Crafted by Leanne. I think she's a semi-new pattern designer, sweetie. Um, so, oh yeah, those were, that worked out perfectly. So now I flatten that and now I'm going to top stitch again. I'm going to lengthen my stitch a little bit more. Got to test it out. I think that's good. So it's still warm and when it's warm from ironing it sticks to the machine the vinyl so gotta wait till it cools off a second and it's one eighth of an inch seam allowance for top stitching Needle down, still kind of warm. Back stitch, pull your lever down. Back stitch, needle up. It kind of went wonky on the thing. I am really struggling with getting it lined up today with my top stitching. I'm not gonna worry about it. Cause you know, only sewers notice that. Most people don't notice that. So now I'm gonna do an eighth of an inch over here. thread. 
the issue, I'm having issues with my bobbin winder on this machine. So this may take a minute here. But you open your plate and you push that little button and pull out your bobbin. Let me see if I've already got bobbin thread and brown that I could use. So we don't have to go through that. Oh yeah, I can use the red. So I got these case, which I like. It keeps your thread from going everywhere once it, you know, unraveling on your bobbin. And it keeps the dust off of them. Amazon, two packs. Got two packs for, oh, I don't remember. I'll see if I can find the link. Now on this, you come, you go, come forward and go back and then go forward. And then you hold your, there's a little slot that you put your thread in. Right there. And so it shouldn't. So you put your needle down. Pull your thread up. I'm still going to need white on the top. Just so I don't have to fill a bobbin. Because my machine, I bought some oil because you're supposed to oil it. And there's two different kinds of oil. And then um, featherweight, uh, I got motor and gear lubricant, which is for the engine. <laughs> the engine. Well, this says for the gears. On the inside but I think this is for the engine too because the motor uh, because that's what everybody recommended and you can buy it comes with a little thing but then I bought a little container to put it in and then this stretches out to put in the little holes make it easy to get oil everywhere so it probably needs oiling I'm not sure about my bobbin winder but that may be just oiling I'm hoping I may need a little tire. It's got like a little tire on it and I may need a new tire. So, kneel down, back stick, level down. Well, my top stitching is pathetic today on this thing. I'm not stressing over it. Okay, there's my top stitching. Now, so I got my front. I like this is front, but my top stitching is not good. This is my front. This is my back. I got these pieces together. So now we're going to see what I have to do here. I've done three already, and I think I've had this memorized. Now we're going to put, I did all that, did all that. We're going to do the zipper tabs and the zipper. Now let me show you a new thing. I usually use a bent fork for my zipper jig. I just put it down and I put my little zipper pull right there. And I put my, my zipper by the yard is what I use by my handmade space. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but someone came up with a bright idea. They found these. I don't know if you can see it right here. It is a paper towel, not paper towel. It's a towel, kitchen towel holder. Let me see. I got two to a pack. Let me show you here. So it's two to a pack. And what you do, it, it sticks wherever. Some people put it on their machines, but I don't like putting things on my machine, sticky things. So you put the zipper pull here, and then you put the zipper through that. And so, let's give that a shot. Here's my zipper. And where did my zipper pull go? There it is. So I'm using um, gunmetal black, and here's my zipper pull. Let me pull you over here so you can get closer to see what I'm doing. I look at my messy part. This is my trash bag. So, you put 
the front of the zipper pull into the little slot going to V. Pull this around into the V. So I'll put that down and it goes way down there. Um, then you separate your zipper. And what I found is you have to separate a little bit and then come in like this. And because your fingers hit here, I mean, because your fingers hit here, you got to come in wide. So you, I mean, hold it up here more than, than right here. So you hold it up here more because of this gets in the way with your fingers. So I, I come in like this. Can y'all see that? Come in like, not straight on, but sideways. And I give it a little bit. Let's see how this is going to work. I may like my, um, let's see if I got them even. It looks good. Let's see. Oh, look at there. Okay. So I'm kind of liking this. The first time I struggled, I did it on another video. So I might have to do a video on this little thing. But that's a, I got two for, I don't remember the price. I want to say $11. Wasn't that cheap. It took a while to get in, but um, that's a neat little thing. I love these people that come with ideas, up with ideas. And it's attached where my fork I have to pull out every time. But now it's attached. Okay, so there's our zipper. Let me move you back. And now we're going to do our zipper tabs. Let me see how she does hers. Oh, you know, I need to attach my fusible. Uh, they call for fleece, but I'm going to use Decaville white. I'm not a fan of fleece. I did this purse over there with fleece, and it's kind of, um, it wrinkles sometimes, and it's kind of, uh, I don't know, bulky looking. So I like the smooth, and so I'm going to use Decaville White. I haven't used Decaville Heavy yet on anything, but just Decaville White. So I'm going to iron this on with my Teflon sheet. Here. And this will take a minute. Let me put it in here so you can see what I'm doing. Oops. Oh, and another thing about this singer is the light gets very hot. So I'm going to turn it off while we're doing this. I just reached over and I reminded me because I, I could feel the heat from that light. The glass, I had a glass part that was in the front of the um, light and it fell out and I can't figure out how to get it back in. Um, it would protect your hand, but it'll, it will burn the stew out of you. Um, I cut this piece way too big. I'm, I'm going to do the center again. Make sure it's good, uh, sticking in the center. Okay. One piece. Now let me do the next piece. Threads everywhere. I feel like I'm one big thread sometimes. When I finish sewing. And these pants I have on, every thread and every piece of whatever sticks to it. So if you have one of these machines, you can do purses and bags on. Of course, there's limitations on certain bags that are real thick with the handles and the, the side seams with the zipper. But you can do most bags. And, you know, it's who you talk to. One man says you shouldn't do it. All the time, you'll ruin your machine. And the other says, I sew boats 
uh, cameras both slip all the time on my machine and it hasn't quit on me. So, just depends on who you talk to. If this is what you have, this is what you have. Now, I tell you, they, they were cheaper on Facebook Marketplace because uh, not everybody wants them right now, but now everybody wants them and they are charging on their leg. But you, you don't have to pay that price. You can offer them a different price, a lower price, which is what I did. And this machine, I mean, this this is a Kenmore right here, folded down. It's my cutting table right now. I got it at a thrift store for 10 bucks, And it's a heavy duty old vintage machine. And I was throwing a lot on that. But uh, I've always wanted a sinker. And so I got me a sinker and I haven't sewn much on it. And my Kenmore is acting up and on the vintage machines, I just don't know. Um, I have to play with them to figure out what they really need. And I'm going to trim this because I cut my interfacing much bigger than my pouch. Not a big deal. Wow. That really wasn't measuring well there. Oh, I know what it was. I didn't allow for seam allowance. Duh. Sometimes I'm a true blonde. Yep. A true blonde. I was born blonde, but now it's paid for. Okay. That's one of them. Fresh. Now let me do the other side. Oh. When I get all my supplies from my Barona bags, I'll do, I'm going to do some videos um, from my new Juki that my wonderful husband got me for my 60th birthday coming up. Okay, I'm going to trim this a little bit. Let's put my scissors up. Put my scissors up. So now I did that, put the Vedecaville light on the back so it's a little more sturdy. Now let's do the zipper tab. So I got the zipper on. I showed you about the zipper tab. You can still use a fork, bend a fork. It's very easy. Or you can buy these. They're kitchen towel holders that stick. Some people have, you know, the big Juki machines and they stick them on there. I just don't like sticking anything on my machines. Personal. Just me. So, so you're going to fold these in half, press, and then fold these to the center, fold these to the center, and stick your zipper in there. Let me do that. Oops, my Teflon stick, Teflon sheet. You don't have to have a fancy iron. You don't have to have a fancy board to iron on. You learn to make do with what you got. And be grateful. I'm grateful I just have a room to sew and not have to do the dining room table like I used to have to do. I am going to have to move to the, either the dining room table or the ping pong table because I want to sew this king size quilt with my new Juki and uh, my daughter my oldest daughter and I love going thrift shopping and we saw a lot of antique quilts 
the patchwork quilt, which is what we both love. And it just got me in the mood to make one. So, okay, so zipper tabs, fold in half, iron, fold again, iron, and then your zipper is going to slide into the center part of that. I make mine bigger than what they call for because you can always trim it off. So let's sew that. Needle down. Let's see about the press pressure. See if this is good. Turn my light back on. That might help us here. I'm gonna glue it out a little bit because I missed the edge over here. Needle down. Too much pressure, it's not wanting to go in reverse because of the zipper part tab. Yeah, that's better. Okay. The red thread is showing on the bottom on top, but that's not an issue because I'll be cutting that part off. I'm telling you, watching sewing videos has been so helpful for me because I'm such a hard on myself if I make a mistake I think nobody wants it nobody I have to correct it it's not good if I have to correct it that's not true you the best make mistakes so I'm putting my zipper inside my tab like that and I'm sewing across here And I lightened my pressure on my presser foot. Sometimes it gets stuck when it don't start all the way down to the middle. And then it's getting stuck on the thing. So you just roll it through. See how it's become a little persnickety? It's okay. I'm going to throw my threads to the back over there and to the side. Okay, so there's our zipper tabs, and then I'm going to trim them down. I have all my scissors in a canister on top of my little cart. My little cart just moves wherever I move. And I have my necessities in there. I keep my thread in the drawer because I don't want dust on it and I want to want it to go bad with the sun affecting it. So there are my tabs. That's done. Now, next step is laying, taking your front piece with, let me see which side I want my front piece. I like this. Your right side is going to be facing up, and your zipper tab is right side is going to be facing down with your tab on the left. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to mark the center of my zipper. So you can either cut it or you can use uh, erasable ink, which is what I have. Where are they? There they are. I have the friction pins, F R I X. Ion from where did I get them? I think I got them from Walmart.com because they were the cheapest. And I got all kinds of colors. And they come off, the ink comes off with the heat. You can also get a chalk marker. That's chalk, uh, like a chalk chalk roller, which I need to get one of those. I have chalk, but not a chalk roller. 
Okay, I'm gonna make those more clear. Okay, so right side down, I'm matching. I don't have to mark this because the center's already marked where we put them together. And so I find my center here, right side down with the zipper. And then I'm going to clip. I clip in the middle first. And then I clip all along here. One side, and I'll clip the other side. I'm gonna move my zipper a little bit to the center now. And just put as many clips as you feel comfortable. I have um, fabric markers, like I told you, because sometimes the bomb thread shows or it does something wacky with um, when you're embroidering. And that's how I found out about it. I actually found out about the markers from Nancy Zeman, who has now gone home to be with the Lord. But um, she's got great programs and had great tips. And then I found, I couldn't find a white one fabric marker in my thing. So I found, or did I? Let me see. I don't remember, I don't think I had a white one in here. No, I do. So I got these fabric markers. But you can also, Nancy Zeman recommended um, these type, which is the micro Micron 05. And they don't, when they're wet, they don't smear or anything. So you, if you have a thread that shows up and you don't want it to show up there, just put that little marker over it. And that's why I usually use the microns. Okay, so I'm not switching to a zipper foot. I'm going to keep this foot on. And I think I am going to change my thread to uh, black. I'm going to cut it off at top. You never want to pull it from the top up. You always want to do it, they say, from pull from the bottom to keep the lint and everything out of here. And I also found that um, Guterman thread is great, a good thread because it doesn't shed lint like, I'm gonna leave the red in there I think, and just put black on top. So I'll put that bobbin back. And I, so far, I'm loving it. And all my machines, I've used it in all my machines. I have a, of course, a ten, my $10 Kenmore. I have another Kenmore that my husband bought for me when we first were married, which will be 28 years in October. And then um, my dad bought me a brother um embroidery sewing machine it does both and then I bought a brother serger and then I got the Kenmore at the thrift stop short thrift shop and then um, I bought the single off Facebook marketplace there's a lot of people that are restoring these singers so if you find one even though it may not look great you can find the parts to these machines on um, Singer or uh, Featherweight.com. Let me get through here first. My new Juki has a needle threader, and the older I get, the more I like needle threaders. Come on now. But if you're looking, a Kenmore is a good machine. The older ones. Of course, my newer one that's, well, it's newer, but it's 28, 30 years old. Um, one was a good machine too. It was fast, but it couldn't sew through stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, like vinyl. 
like this Kenmore does. This Kenmore is all metal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, kneel down. Back stitch. Move my zipper foot. <clears throat> Got something caught in my throat. <clears> throat> Trim your threads. So I would look at thrift stores. Um, this was the thrift store we went to. Um, was a thrift store. It wasn't like Goodwill or Salvation Army. It was just a. Uh, I think it supported a Christian ministry. So sewing that on, our first part of the zipper. Now. My daughter lives near Raleigh, North Carolina, my oldest, and she, they had, in Raleigh, North Carolina, they had the best thrift stores. I mean, you can find everything you need there. So, let's see, I need to top stitch this, but do I top stitch it yet? No. Do I? Yes. Lay the zipper right side down on the top stitch together using a long stitch length. Top stitch, did she mean base stitch? I don't think I'm supposed to top stitch that yet. I can't remember how I did it last time. I think I wait until you do the lining with it is what I'm going to do. Okay, let's take one of my lining pieces. Right sides together. This is where I get always totally confused. I need to mark my centers with my lining and this I am going to cut. I'm going to do both the top and the bottom. Not sure we need the bottom, but I can't remember. If I do that. I just do a little snip. A little snip. And I have vinyl center scissors marked. I have fabric scissors marked. Because my family, if they touch my scissors, it could mean trouble. And I really like taking care of my scissors. I don't buy real expensive scissors, so... I like taking care of my scissors. Okay, so we are going to put right sides together. So this is going to be right side of the vinyl down. Match the centers. I need to move the zipper tab over. I'm going to move it back. So I'll start there. If you don't understand um, instructional videos that I do on this, I'm just showing you. This is really not an instructional video. It's just showing what I do on my singer because a viewer requested it. The main key with a singer is getting to use to your machine, knowing its quirks, knowing what thread it likes, knowing what needle it likes, knowing your pressure to your presser foot, knowing that you got to put the reverse down, get used to that, get used to the pedal. Okay, this is a little overhang here. I think we're good though. And this is a quarter of an inch, which I did before. This is where I always get confused, but we'll go for it. Stitch all the way back. Now I may have to lighten the pressure, pressure on the pressure. Okay, 
This one's getting thick here. I gotta wait some now until I hit the zipper. So you can see how it does go over, this machine does go over vinyl, does go over waterproof canvas in the back. Now I'm going to take this and iron it a little bit, and then I'm going to top stitch. So let me, if you want to watch, let me move you over here, don't look at my messy room. I got a bookshelf, my books. My dog's barking outside. My husband's probably asleep. I'm not going to iron the vinyl. I'm just doing the top of it. Let me pull this down. Stretching it. It doesn't matter that it doesn't match here. You want your lining shorter so you don't have a sag. But I'm trying to pull both in so we can get them. It's easier if you do the lining first and get it the back, but make sure the front's pulled down far enough to in the front, like right here in the corner. Do not iron the vinyl, as y'all know. Don't iron the vinyl. 